Oh, I think we're there. Just, so just it, won't, it. it won't mute. There yeah, just close it, sweetie. <laughs> I know everyone's talking to me now. Nick's talking to me. Sam's talking to me. My laptop's making noises because I tried to mute it and it didn't mute. And Oh my goodness, you guys. So, hello. Welcome to, gosh, our 10th, right? Our 10th. March, March 21st is when we did the first one of these. So, welcome to our 10th. Uh, in the series, started out as my plan was two classes, and now we are number 10 in the series. So we're 10 in the series of our Intro to Travelers Notebook class. So welcome. If you have been with me all along or been with me part of the time, thank you so much. Um, welcome back. I know there are some of you that have been here for every single one, and that is amazing. I almost haven't been here for every single one. Today was one of those days that... Um, to be honest with you guys, today almost didn't happen. So um, yesterday was a bit of a crazy day. And if you received the email, you received it late last night um, about the about what the link today is today is class. So good news is we're here and things are good. Um, a couple reminders if you are watching live and participating in the chat, great. I love that. You guys know that I always go back after the fact and read through the chat because it's just really interesting for me to hear what you guys are saying and I miss a lot of that as we are kind of working together. Um, so if you're in the chat, pop in, say hi. A lot of you I think have become friends as you've been chatting back and forth. So um, say hi, tell me your name and where you're from. If you have been participating live and you haven't participated in the chat, I encourage you to do so. It's kind of fun. Um, lots of people chatting back and forth and sharing ideas and um, that's where I will see questions or Sam. Um, we'll see questions. Sam is our 19 year old and he is here at home with us for the last several months. So he is now my producer. How's huh, Sammy? Hello. Hello. Yeah. So we love that. He and I have so much fun um, doing this together. So it's something that we both look forward to every, every Saturday. Uh, so if you haven't participated, participated in the chat before, I encourage you to do so because that's kind of fun. Um, if you are watching after the fact, that is a-okay. No, um, this time doesn't work for everyone. And sometimes you just like to save them up and, and watch them at a later date. Uh, a, a lady emailed me earlier this week and said, you're my Netflix. I'm binge watching you, which I thought was so funny. I said, wow, no one's ever called me their Netflix before. So that was kind of fun. If you're watching after the fact, please leave a comment so I know that you're there and let me know. Um, if, you, if you've been using Traveler's Notebooks, if you're new to Traveler's notebook, Notebooks, whatever you want to say, it's just that I know you're there. Also, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And I, I never mention this, I don't know why. If you're not subscribing to my YouTube channel, you should, it's super easy. Just click subscribe and then you will get notified anytime I have a new video going. So I need to chat for another minute because um, Sam, my producer, has vacated the premises for a minute. I think he needed some more milk. Today's breakfast for Sam is um, Eggo waffles with peanut butter on top and syrup. Um, so today's class, you guys, um, today's class, we will be making our own clips and there are a ton of different clips that we can make. We're going to walk through uh, maybe four or five different variations and um, it'll be, it'll, I think it'll be fun. Uh, some of the clips are more decorative, so more uh, form and others will be definitely more functional, maybe not as cute and fun and decorative, but definitely functional. So last week we touched on kind of clips and decorating your traveler's notebook a little bit. We talked about the different clips that you can use, where you can use them. We talked about decorating the spine of your traveler's notebook. And then week 10, we said we would really dive into making some of those pretty things. So, um, Sam, <laughs> Sam is not here. I'm going to turn on the lights and I can, you guys know what happens sometimes when I flip the camera. Sometimes it works well and sometimes it does not work so well. And you see my feet and we see all different kinds of things. So, Sammy Lou, we're moving the lights in. Okay, we are flipping, I think. Oh gosh, this is some very interesting light on me. All right. Uh, yeah, okay, we're getting there. All right, so while he does that, uh, I think that's good, Sam. That looks good. Now I have to see who's here. 
Mary and Karen and Cynthia's Crafty Corner. Karen yeah. Haynes. Karen, you're here. Lots of them. I know that. I know a lot of you are here. Lots of them. Sue, uh, Veronica, you guys, lots of um, repeated attendees, which I love that. Um, all right. So let's talk about clips and some of the different things that we can do. As I, um, as I last week was thinking about clips, and that's one of the ways that I definitely uh, decorate my traveler's notebooks, I started going through some of my traveler's notebooks. And you guys know I don't always use the same cover, the same traveler's notebook. I um, switch things in and out, and sometimes I don't pull the things in, or pull the things out that had been in. So um, I use clips a lot, and mostly, I'm using clips for a decorative purpose. So here, I've added a little clip here, a little bow clip here. Every once in a while, I'll add a clip at the top. That can be decorative, but it can also serve as a nice page marker. So that is a great example of it being form because it's cute, but also function if I use it as like a bookmark or a page marker. So just I just tuck different things in there. Another example would be this guy. So sometimes there are clips that you can buy. For example, this is a little doodle clip. Um, doodle Bug makes that little clip, so um, that is just added it. But then you can start adding other things. So like this little, um, that little bow clip just tucks right in there. When we get to, well, we started this last week, right? You guys remember when we started this whole spread last week? And let me move that off to the side. Um, I've added a few clips, so as we start talking and we start looking and working at working with different clips, we'll kind of come back to this little guy. What we're gonna start with though, oh, this is one more of my little samples that we'll get to in a sec. What I'm gonna start with, and we talked about this at the very beginning of last week, and this was using the elastics on the spine of your traveler's notebook as a great spot to decorate. So even though this isn't a clip, I wanted to start here because there's some things that we'll talk about and learn here that will help us as we are um, possibly doing some clips later on. So this was just a little leather tassel and I bought that at Hobby Lobby. So I pulled, I had a couple of um, others that I bought at Hobby Lobby and they are just a basic leather, leather tassel and they have that little gold piece at the top. And the key there is that it has a little uh, loop at the top, right? So that is what we can use as a fastener. So with this guy, all I did, I didn't even take a lobster clip and we'll talk lobster clips in a second. This little guy already had the jump ring on it. And all I did was use my um, jewelry pliers and we'll take a look at those in a minute to open up that ring and then clip it right there on the elastic. So that can just give my traveler's notebook just a little bit of extra, you know, fun decoration. Not really functional, definitely more form. That one though, if I wanna take off and switch out easily, um, it's not as easy because I need to, in order to do that, I would need to grab my little jewelry pliers here and then um, you know unhook that jump ring. When we talk jewelry pliers, and these are, you can find these pretty much at any craft store and you don't have to spend a lot of money on them. The difference between these and a regular set of pliers is that they are not threaded in here, right? They're not threaded, there's some heavy plastic there. These are just ones that I've had for years. And that makes sure that when I go to open or twist open that jump ring, that it is not, um, the threads aren't, you know, damaging the jump ring. So, um, but if I wanted to replace this, then I have to grab these and untwist and it's kind of a pain. So what I can do is that's a similar little tassel there, right? This one has a lobster clasp attached to it. And we talked about lobster clasps last week. These little lobster clasps, I think we figured out when we measured them because they come in different sizes and that's something that's really important to know, especially if you're you know, ordering kind of sight unseen, maybe if you're ordering on Amazon or something. The ones that I use are about one centimeter, okay? So you can get them much larger and you might want them larger, but sometimes you don't really realize what you're getting and you get something that is way too big, right? All right, so with that, same thing. I just use my little jewelry pliers, right? I'm holding those in my right hand because I'm right-handed. And over here, actually, you know what I should have? I have, that just reminded me. 
I have two pairs of these, and I have no idea where the other pair is. Um, yeah, you know what, Sammy? I no clue. Oh, actually, you know what, Sam? You guys hang tight one sec. Um, will you come over here in one of these doors on this side? Over here? Um, down one more. Okay. Hang tight, guys! Um, that's right. Don't, Sandy, don't keep opening those because it's going to make loud noises. All right. So normally what I would have, I would have two pair of jewelry pliers and I don't necessarily, I guess, need to have two, but if I have two pair, it makes it much easier for me to hold on on one end and then with the other side, use my other pair of pliers to open that clip. All right. So sorry, I didn't, I, I didn't think about my second pair. Okay. So if we want to make these, the different things that we can start to look for either in our stash or at a, at a craft store, something like this. So these were Maggie Holmes from Crate Paper. These were just six little tassels. And I thought, oh, those would make great. Those would make really fun little, fun little tassels to hang off the edge of my elastics, right? That's that guy that we had looked at from the larger package. Um, any kind of charm. So that is a silver-ish, not real silver, but that is a silver anchor charm. This is a snowflake charm. I have a little jingle bell that I could use. I have even this little charm right here. So those charms typically I'm finding, if I'm using them in a kit like this guy, then I would go to Amazon and buy a lot of those. Something like this, I probably bought it maybe like a Joann's or a Hobby Lobby because I thought that would make a fun charm. So as we have all of those little guys, and I'm just going to use this little one as an example. This one doesn't have a jump ring on it, right? So I need a jump ring. And a jump ring, maybe if you've ever perused the jewelry aisle or aisles at you know Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something, you'll see little packages of these. These are jump rings. So um, they come in silver, they come in gold, they probably come in copper and all different kinds of things. And they also come in different sizes. So I usually like to have a really good assortment of, um, of sizes on hand and colors because I never know what I might need. So I'm gonna take that little jump ring and I'm gonna take this guy. I come back here and I'm just gonna open up that jump ring. Yes, sweetie? Say hi to your mom. What? Oh, hi, mom. <laughs> and you guys, Nick, my husband Nick's on here too. It's a family affair. Jack, our other son is not on here actually, and this is one of the reasons why today almost didn't happen. Um, right after we're done today, Sam and I are jumping in the car and going to visit my dad in California. I think I told you guys that um, his wife passed away a couple of weeks ago. So we thought, you know what, now is a really good time. So Jack, our son lives, our other son lives in Tacoma, Washington, and he is on his way down um, to meet us. So anyhow, um, I'm taking my, oh yeah, look at Sammy. Guess what, you guys, that was. That really wasn't a squirrel. Here's the squirrel. Here's our squirrel making its way through, <laughs> making its way through the video today. All right, so I have my jump ring and I'm just gonna loop that through. So it's still open. So at this point, if I wanted, I could just loop that right through my elastic and I could close that, okay? And then it would just be like this guy. It would just be hanging off, oops, just like that guy. But the other thing that I could do, and I could not find, I don't think I have any gold lobster clasps, so that's why I'm using a silver. I couldn't find my silver jump rings either, so I just totally, let's take any one of those. I totally stretched that out. The other thing is when you're working with nails, it makes it a little bit harder, right? All right, so I've got my jump ring. I've got, I hate that. I have my jump ring and I make the squirrel a charm. Oh my gosh, that well, would be so fun. Mom, what? You make the squirrel a charm. I know, that's what someone said. Make the squirrel a charm. We could drill, Sammy, you'd have to like drill it. No, no, no. You'd have to drill into his head. No, Sammy, I need your help. Oh, he's gone. He's going to go try to drill into his head and find one of those little eye bolt things and then come back and then I'll jump ring it on. We'll see how that works, right? Okay, so I have opened my jump ring and now I'm going to loop that through my lobster clasp and I'm also going to loop that through my um, my little tassel there. And oh gosh, I wish I had my second pair of, this would make life so much easier if I had my second pair of jewelry 
pliers. Okay, there, That's that works. So now I have my little tassel. It is on my jump ring and we're not gonna worry that it's silver and gold, that's okay. That's what, I think that's the thing these days. I think you mix over silver and gold, right? So we're okay. I am going to just loop that right there through that little elastic and there we go. Now I have a little dangly charm on my traveler's notebook. And I could add a bunch of those if I want. I could have some that were longer, some that were shorter. Um, I showed you guys this last week because I thought it was so stinking cute. I could take this little guy and this I just bought at Daiso, Japanese dollar store. This is, my, my thumbnail is not gonna do well after this, you guys, that's all right. What I'm going, what I wanna see is if I can open that up. I'm gonna open that up, take off that little guy. Mm, I'm gonna come back in. Uh-oh. Okay, loop that. Actually, I don't even need that because I'm not gonna do a lobster clasp. Let's see how this works. That can go. Mm -mm -mm. Right there, hook on. And if I had if I had a lobster a gold lobster clasp, I would really rather use that because um I would rather it be gold. But anyway, and I put them on backwards, but there we go. There's our little kitty cat now that can also dangle off of our off of our little spine. All right, so those are just a couple of ways that we could make different charms to hang off of our spine. So look through your stash, especially if you ever got involved in the kind of jewelry making and beads and things like that. You might have some really fun things that you could see. Hold on, I see out of frame. I need to remember. Yep, I just, okay. Our issue is my little stand here. Okay, I'm gonna move forward, you guys. Um, I need Nick and Sam to please help me remember to stay forward because anyhow. All right, so that is what we do when we decorate with charms on the, on the spine. All right, so now let's take a look at starting to use clips and make different clips. And before we even get into clips, we can take a look at things that really aren't clips, but we could kind of pretend that they are. And this is when we are decorating, right? So I have here, this is a hat pin, right? It is really sharp on the end, but it has this nice star. So if I wanted something like that, I could just tuck that right into my pocket. And then it's a decorative, so it's kind of a little bit like a, like a clip. We looked at these last week too. These were cupcake toppers. And I thought these were so fun. And I use these every Halloween to tuck in the pockets of my traveler's notebook. So that obviously I wouldn't put a witch with these things, but, um, or, or a pumpkin, but those can tuck right into my pockets just like I would tuck a clip into my pocket. So um, again, look through your stash, look at what you might have and um, look at, I mean, I think these I bought at TJ Maxx or Home Goods in the, um, you know, in the like wrapping paper section. So kind of keep your eye out for different things that might work. Now, if you didn't want that as a toothpick, you really wanted to have that as a clip, I'm gonna kind of put her aside for a sec and we're gonna come back and show how we could take her and turn her into a clip. All right, let me pull these guys out. Okay. Um, using just regular paper clips. And I want to grab this one. So last week as we were decorating and we put this spread together, I talked about using just regular little paper clips. And these are a little bit more uh, decorative than say your regular, what are you doing Sam? I'm looking for the super glue. Sam, sorry, please don't do that. I don't have the super glue in here. Oh my goodness, he's trying to really do something with the squirrel. So it's not in here. So, oh goodness, okay. Yeah, I need right. the super glue. Okay, um, go get it out of one of my nail boxes. <coughs> okay, yeah. all right. So we have a regular paper clip that, like that that's decorative. We even have larger paper clips like this that are decorative. But what I used last week, I used these really fun paper clips that are just a little bit different, right? This is kind of a large jumbo and it's really wide. And this is a little small guy, but um, he is kind of small and mini. So even clips like that, they are decorative. We added one right there. It really didn't serve a purpose. It really wasn't hooking all those things together because 
um, they're already adhered down. But over here, using something like that, that clip could definitely serve as a, it's decorative, but it could also serve for me as a page marker, right? So especially the big one. If I put that there, when I open this guy up, then I know, oh, that's the page that I'm working on. So that is where, um, that's where I'll be right now. Let me just double check you guys. So um, we're good on, we're, we're good. We're not out of frame anymore, right? I think we're good. Okay, so um, little clips like that. And those are just regular clips. I mean, even if you wanted, if you have a gold paper clip, I could do the same thing with that little guy, right? It's still, it's decorative. Well, it's kind of decorative because it's gold. Oh, but look how fun that is. When I put it on that paper, then I could kind of highlight if there's something I like that I wanted to highlight. Um, these paper clips, you guys, I have linked them in the description of the video. I have those on my website. I should also mention um, a lot of the things, and not so much in this video because we're kind of using a lot of found things and pulling things from our stash, but I always try to link the products that I'm using in the description of the video, so down below, along with um, link to my website and all different kinds of things like that. So you can always find that information below. Okay, and I've got my list here. I had to make sure I had um, I had my list. So we, so I, so we, so I knew uh, what we were doing and where we were headed. So the next one is using stretchy ribbon to make clips. So if we rewind, um, oh, I think I don't even know, you guys. That was probably video eight, maybe I want to say when we were making. Let me grab one. All right, when we were making our pen loops, right? And if you missed video, I think it's video eight, if anyone remembers, um, you could take your little binder clips like this and we were using them to make pen loops, right? So I could just pop that right there and then I could add my pen right through that loop. And we were using the stretchy ribbon to do that. So we're back to that stretchy ribbon again. The stretchy ribbon where I normally buy the stretchy ribbon is Hobby Lobby. And that's just because Hobby Lobby is pretty close to me and it's super convenient. And there's tons of different colors of stretchy ribbon. So stretchy ribbon, or I should say elastic ribbon. It's stretchy, but it's really elastic ribbon. So it is ribbon, but it is elastic. So a lot of times you see these, you see hair ties made out of these, right? Because they are nice and stretchy. But they're also great for making our little um, our little pen loops. But I also like to use the stretchy ribbon to make paper clips. I could do this with <clears throat> I could do this with fabric. I could do this with tool. I could do this with all different kinds of things. So let's just take a quick look how we would do that. I um oh let me see what do I do with the rest of those. Okay, here's a bunch. Uh, I generally will take some of the stretchy ribbon, let's take this pink, and really the length that you cut is going to depend on how long you want the little tails to be, right? But the other factor that's involved is sometimes if it is, um, if the ribbon is not long enough, it becomes really hard, at least for me, to get my little fingers in there and try to, um, and try to loop it through. Michelle, I'm not alone today. Sam is here. Hi. Sam is here. Well, he's been popping in and out. Um, um, I've been busy. You've been busy, yes, because Sam and I are headed on the road, right, after this. And then, bless my, you guys, seriously, bless my husband's heart and Sam's heart because um, it has been a team effort uh, the last week or two at Lail by Mail. We've been all packing orders and kidding, and it's been kind of crazy. All right, look in here. Um, and I can't remember who don't, suggested. Don't, don't oh, yeah, don't. Okay, right. It's not fully dry. It's not yet, fully dry. It's so, done. Handy Sam, as soon as whoever it was said, make a. Ooh, yeah, whoops. There's still super glue on yeah, that, I bud. I told you not to touch that, man. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. I could end up with. I could end up with squirrel attached to my fingers. Anyhow, so he went in, he drilled through the top of the. Um, drilled through the top, top of the squirrel's head. Oh, that's not even an eye loop, is it? You just took wire and like, oh, dad did, yeah. All right, Nick just walked in, you guys, and he's got his hands in the air like, yes. 
Anyhow. I fabricated that. I you did fabricate it, so. Some I know. Uh, hey, I know. Okay, All right, so you guys, now this brings up a whole other um, segment of uh, little pieces that you could look look for um, in your stash or even in um, the, the aisles of your favorite craft store, but they have little teeny miniature, you know, things that, Oh, I know. They have little miniature things that people put in, like, the fairy gardens. So wow. you could probably... Uh-uh. Oh, thanks. Good? Can you see? Yeah. Not that anyone could see me. He just told me I had lipstick on my toes. <coughs> um, anyhow, so wouldn't that be fun, you guys? So... Oh, hi, Karen Petrowski. Hi, Karen Petrowski. Everyone's on today. I, lots of people are on today. Okay, yes, yeah, squirrel. So... Um, squirrel is, we're gonna have to come up with a name for the squirrel. So I'm gonna take a quick break, really sec. We gotta read these. So, hi Vicky, watching from her phone, okay. Um, Sammy, mostly Mandy, hi Mandy. Um, uh, Katie, Aunt now, yes, Noemi, Noemi, right, ma'am, Mimi. Yes, you're the one who suggested, thank you. Uh, let's see, father-son effort, yeah. Um, Mandy, lots of things around here are father-son effort, absolutely. Family cooperation. Um, and, okay, so I saw someone say um, that you had looked for this and you couldn't find it in, in Hobby Lobby. So it is in the ribbon section, but it is not like in the main ribbon section. It's on the very far, at least at my Hobby Lobby, it is on the far side of the aisle. But if you go in and just ask one of the, one of the ladies, usually at the fabric counter, and say, where's your elastic ribbon? Then they should be able to help you find it. Uh, a couple people also mentioned that they have found it on Amazon. So um, you just kind of look and see what you can find. So when we are trying to decide how long to cut the ribbon, the stretchy ribbon, between four and five inches is usually what I do. And I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut a five inch piece so you can see why usually I would do five instead of four. Okay, I'm gonna put those things back. All right, so let's get this guy out of the way and that guy out of the way, Sammy. And I'm going to loop my ribbon, right? So I have the loop up here at the top and the non-loop, the open end at the bottom. Your ribbon, it well, of course it's two-sided, but this particular one, it's kind of dull on one side and then it is shinier on the other. So just something to be aware of as you're working with that stretchy ribbon. So I'm taking my paper clip. And I want my loop to be at the opposite end, right? I want it to be at this end because this is the end that I want to be able to clip on something. So I don't want it there. I'm going to loop my ribbon and I'm going to stick it through that top, right? So my, my top of my loop is here, right? Top of my loop is there. And this is the bottom of my loop. Those are little tails. I am going to loop those. So I'm taking those. I am looping them up through and I am pulling. Now, the reason that I like to do that, and there's definitely another way to do that, hang on, Sam, is because it makes a nice little finished look right there. If I tied that differently, then I wouldn't have that nice little finished look. So my tails are really long here. This is far longer than I would normally want my tails to be, but long enough that I could um, easily tie that. If I go to four, and it just depends on you, it depends on um, I'm 5'10", well, Sam will say, oh, I'm 5'8". I used five to be 5'10", which is interesting. Anyhow, so I am a larger person. I have larger hands, a little bit harder to get my hands in there. So then I just come in and I shouldn't say larger. That's not good. I'm a taller person. I like that word better, right? Okay, so there we go. What are you laughing at, Sammy? No, nothing. No, nothing. I will tell you after. Okay, so there we are, there's our little clip. Now, my clip again, it can be form or function. If I want it to be form, meaning I want it to just be cute and not really serve a purpose, I could just tuck it right in there and then it's cute. Now, I may not like that that is so long. I might not like that it's really long sticking through. If I push the shorter edge out, it is not as long. But I also have smaller paper clips. The smaller paper clips are a little bit harder for me because it's harder to get that little loop in there, but you could have it be smaller. The other thing is sometimes I cheat. Sometimes I just go like that and, well, it's actually more if I went like this, so it would tuck into a pocket, but it's still cute, but it's not that, um, that metal isn't even showing. Or I can uh, just kind of tuck it under another one like this and then put something over it. So it's secure. 
but you can't see the metal. All right, so I can do that with my stretchy ribbon. I can do that with fabric strips. I can do that with tulle, right? So if you want really big, bushy, bushy clips, then you can do a tulle. And tool, I also, well, it depends again, I should say. If I am buying for my kits, I usually will buy online because I need a lot more. But if I am buying just to kind of have fun and play with, you guys, and I, I again, I know I keep saying Hobby Lobby, I should just say your, um, your favorite big box craft store. Um, spools of tool um, that are maybe a couple dollars. So this would be a good thing if you have friends that you're doing with this, maybe everybody get a different color and then, you know, get as much as you need and play. But we won't go through making one of those. All right, so um, there was one more little one and I did not make this, but I had this in my stash and I thought it might be fun to share. Or to try to make. Oh, here it is. So this one, these are just like little leather strips. Those are just little leather tassels. And if I were to deconstruct that, it was looped through exactly the way that we did these. So if you have little leather strips like that, if you have spools of leather, if you've done jewelry making and you have those, you know, kind of hanging around, then that would be another fun thing to do. It's just, again, gives us a little bit more of a decorate, oh, whoopsie. I just ripped that. I pulled it too hard. Um, just a little bit more of a decoration in Dang our little clip. Lails. Dang it, Lails. I know. No, you, oh, heavens, that, okay, that, let's, well, let's just get, Sam, will you pull that out? That did not, um, that did not go so well. I pulled all those little things off, you guys. I pulled too hard. All right, so let's, let's take a breather here and let's clean up the mess because I have to do that or else... You got I'm... your paper clip stuck on something. That's what it was. Yeah. Did you get it out, Sonny? You said I got it out, of okay. course. Okay. Thank you. Of course you did, right? All right, guys. Hang tight. But it... it, it, it... Da -da -da. We are... Is the big Let me keep thing. moving all the things. Just so... All right. I think we're good. Let's take a look now and see what my list says. Um, the next one. Oh, we talked about the stretch. We, we talked about the tool. Um, paper clips again. So when we were looking at the little charms that we made before, right? Oh, look at, we actually looked at this lot last week. That was a little charm that I bought. That was a little charm that I bought. But as we were looking at the charms before, we were just talking about them, uh, hanging off of our elastics, right? But look at this. They can also hang off of your paper clips. These I did not make. I bought at PlannerCon last year in San Francisco. And I know, I think I saw a couple of you saying that there were a number of you here from um, Northern California. And I think that's how we know each other is from PlannerCon for a couple of years. I taught um, uh, some traveler's notebook classes and some memory keeping pl classes in your planner at PlannerCon. So these I bought at PlannerCon, but you guys really, all those are little charms, jump rings, and paper clips, right? So what I would do with one of these little guys, I wouldn't put it in a pocket because it's gonna, it's gonna get kind of all weird if I try to tuck that in. What I would do is use it inside for a page marker, right? So it's just a nice, cute little page marker for me. And then when I go to write, I would probably pull that out just because, you know, it might get in the way, but super cute, um, another great idea. So all I would do there, if we wanted to take this little guy, right? And I tell you, you guys are gonna go look at the jewelry section in a whole other light at your craft store, right? I'm gonna open this up. And what's fun too, a lot of times, I think this one probably came on, there were probably three or four charms total on it. So I could kind of have a lot of fun doing that. All right, so I am going to, I just used my jump ring, right? I looped through the jump ring that was on the charm. And then I am going to loop through the bottom of my paper clip, All right? Okay, there we go. And look how easy that was, right? I don't have to be like a, a pro jewelry maker. Clearly I'm not, um, but that was so easy. And now it can come right back in here again. And ta-da, so cute little thing. Uh, small ones, big ones. 
You could also use different kind of paper clips. So these are teardrop paper clips, right? So it's a little teardrop and same concept though, taking jump ring and attaching our little charms to the end. So that we'll just put right there so we can see what that looks like. Let's get that guy off, it's too hard to maneuver that. Okay, there we go. So there's a cute, just a cute little dangly, right? And I have a couple of those. Um, I have linked to, same links as last week, there were um, three individuals that I shop from pretty frequently. Peach Palm is one, um, Fur and You is one, and these are all linked in the description of the video. And then um, my friend Emma Stone, you guys remember that? Yeah, not Emma Stone. Um, Hearts by Emma, Emma Tune. Anyhow, um, they make all kinds of really fun little danglies like that if you didn't want to make your own. Also attach a piece of chain to a paper clip and attach charms to it. Oh, that would be, that could be cool, right? Attach a little piece of chain and attach our charms. And, oh, and you know what, Joy Allen, guess what? All right, you guys, um, I, I, let's, let's, in case you missed that, well, let's just pretend. Um, she said, well, I don't even bother with the jump ring. I just thread my charm right through the paper clip. So look at, we could do that as well with this little, with this little anchor, anchor right? So look at, sometimes I do things the hard way. I always joke. So when I'm teaching classes in person and I go through a, you know, elaborate, this is how we're going to do this. And someone will raise their hand and say, Lil, can I ask you a question? And I said, yeah. Well, why did you do it that way? Because if you did it this way, it'd be so much easier. And I go, oh yeah, my brain doesn't think that way. My brain thinks the long way. Um, I always joke, it's kind of like in school, we had to learn long division before we could appreciate short division, right? So anyhow, um, <laughs> this that was my long division and this is Joy Ellen's version of the short division, right? Just let it through, okay. So um, our next thing is, hang on, I'm gonna grab this, this little guy right here. So you can use so many different things to make your own clips. So actually we're gonna start over here on this side. Like a squirrel and a power drill. Like a squirrel and a power drill, exactly. Although he'd be a little bit harder um, to no. put in your pocket because it'd make it too thick. Let's see, Debbie, what are you saying? You can use little earring stopper things to keep the charms from slipping down the clip. Ooh, that's a great idea. The little tiny, they just look like somebody chopped off a little tiny snippet of a tube, a teeny tiny tube. That's a great idea. Okay, so more clips. And I have an assortment here of different clips that I have made. These are all just different pre-made embellishments, okay? That is a, um, oh, I can't even remember what that thing is called. Anyhow, I just attached it, not very cleanly though, um, to, the, to a paper clip. So I used washi there to do that. This one, well oh, actually, well, hang on. Um, that guy, that's a piece of chipboard, right? Just a piece of chipboard. And here I used um, probably a little E6000 and then used a piece of felt to back that. So. Um, I'll use chipboard a lot because chipboard, some of us have lots of chipboard. This little guy, that is a an, um, a wood a wood veneer embellishment, right? So same thing there. I just used some of my E6000 and that right on the back. So lots of different things when it comes to a, attaching to paper clips. I even here, that's another little wood veneer. That's a little wood veneer spider right to the paper clip. Okay. So now let's take a look at these guys because these are gonna segue us into something new. I have taken a paper flower. That's one of my clips. There's another piece of chipboard, one of my clips. Another piece of chipboard, one of my clips. But you'll notice these clips are different than the paper clips that we've been using, right? These are bobby pin bases. They're bobby pins with a base. So again, I buy these at Hobby Lobby. They're in the jewelry section. You can also find these on Amazon. That is a bobby pin, right? But there is a base. There is a base at the top of that bobby pin. So basically there's a circle on top, right? It's a metal circle and it is just like, um, it's, it's made out of the same material as the bobby pin. So that base is what makes it really easy for us to do this. 
there are different sizes. So this one is 50 millimeter, no, 50 millimeters long, eight millimeter pad. So you just want to know sometimes the pads are smaller than this. And if the pad, if you're buying the bobby pins with the bases, if the pads are really small, sometimes it's hard, harder to adhere whatever you want to adhere to it. So these I use for tons of different types of clips when I'm making my own clips. There's the back side. That's my paper flower. That is, eesh, that's got yucky stuff all over the back of it. Um, they, sometimes they're not very clean on the back, you guys. Um, all E6000, and that is what I am using to put those together. But those are kind of my least favorite to make. Let's take a look at my most favorite to make. Again, Hobby Lobby. Um, in the, well, lots of different sections. So in the button section. So they have a little section and it's probably a two foot wide by five foot tall um, area, at least at my Hobby Lobby, where they have all these little packages of decorative buttons, okay? That little guy. So that gnome, all I did was I pulled the back. I just um, used my tweezers, or not my tweezers, my pliers to pull that back off. And then I took that with my base. I took that with my, oh, look it, I didn't even take him off. He doesn't have to come off. I took that with my base, a little E6000, and adhered that, and now there's my little clip. So, super easy way to make your own clips with all different kinds of fun little, you know, toppers. That, you notice, is a thicker, it's a wider base. So that's eight, that one's probably, I bet, about 15. Oh, and Sam just clipped off the little top there. So, um, let's take a look at some of the others. That is a watermelon. That is a button. Oh, we pulled the shank off. That's what that's called. Um, let's see other buttons. Oh, this one, that is also a button, right? In that same section, little button. This guy, the little fox, also a button. Oh, two little foxes, probably from the same package. Both buttons. So um, take a look at your buttons. You guys could even do this with regular old buttons, right? That would be cute to do too. So those are all um, just decorative buttons that I have used. So now let's take a look at some other things that I have used. This is just, it's a resin bird. And it was not, I didn't find this at Hobby Lobby. I can't remember. I think Webster's Pages used to make these, and this is a really long time ago. So again, there's my little bobby pin base, my E6000, down it goes. These guys, these little, um, I don't know, uh, how do you say the word? And I know I'm totally losing it. Someone um, remind me what these are called. Club, cl cl I know, cl cl so, yeah, you know what? Someone's gonna tell me. I'm just gonna wait. Um, anyhow, this was a package of those, right? Package of a whole bunch of those little resin flower things that I can't remember the name. So I just buy those, again, same thing. Take my little bobby pin base, my E6000, and in they go. So Debbie just asked, is that one end that sticks out poke through your page? So really generally, there we go, yes, Katie Lynn and Katie A. Uh, cabochon, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that's what those are called, cabochons. Um, anyhow, Debbie, I generally don't, if I'm, if I'm putting these up at the top of my page, I might try to keep that on the cover. Um, if I put it in here, if you ever see me put it right here, it's probably just because, Karen, that's the flower, the flower's a dahlia, yes. Um, if I put it here, that's purely for decorative purposes. I would not um, probably do this and take it with me because it would. It would probably poke through the paper. But it's great over here. Let me move that. It's a great over here as a decorative element for your pocket. This is the one we talked about last week. Remember the owl? That always reminds me of my grandma, so I use that owl a lot. Same thing. That was just a button. And in it goes. Well, kind of. Also that little pineapple, all a button from, um, buttons from Hobby Lobby. Okay, so other things that we could use. This is a fabric covered brad. Fabric covered brad. I pulled the little um, prongs, little prongs off the back and adhered. 
So I could do the same thing. And actually, I'm just going to get a couple of these out while I'm talking. And I'm going to make some of these, guys, so you can see how easy it is. I have a paper towel. I have my little plate. And generally, if I'm doing this, I will try to um, do a bunch at the same time. So with that, Brad, I am literally just back and forth. Um, Deidre, I think what she meant when she said poke through the paper, and then what I meant when I said poke through the paper, was that if I put, because this, that bobby pin base is not flat, because it's like a bobby pin, right? Let's see, let me grab another one. Because it's like a bobby pin, so at the end, it pokes up. So if I had that in one of my inserts that that part that pokes up could potentially poke through the paper on the other side. Okay. All right. And you know what's funny? You probably said, oh, never mind. I got it. Remember, I have about, I think, a 30 second to a minute delay from what you guys are saying. And then what, um, and then <laughs> what I see and then comment on. So, um, all right. So that little Brad, all I did as I was talking, those are the metal prongs on the back. Those I just flipped back and forth until they came off. When I'm doing this, I will try to grab a bunch at one time because it gets a little tiny bit messy. I will grab a bunch of my little pieces. There's another one. Um, let's see. Oh, this Santa. That's just a resin guy. He can be one. What else did I have here? Oh, I know. So I have these little metal. Um, these are just kind of little metal. I'm not sure what they are. It's got a, well, I won't worry about that. A little sticky on the back. But really, anything, I can use anything to make um, one of my clips. So I would turn all of these guys over, and I would get out four bases here. Game pieces, that could be fun for sure. I mean, really, you guys, um, a lot of different things that you could, that you could use. Oh, I'm going to do this guy too. All right, so... I just line all these little guys up and I get out the clips that I want to use. We pull out our E6000. So E6000, if you didn't see that video, that is your super duper heavy duty adhesive. This works on everything, wood, glass, metal. Um, it's really strong and we want a really strong adhesive because this, these little guys in our planner, they're going to get, I mean, they're going to kind of get touched a lot and they're going to kind of move around a lot. So we want to make sure that things are really strong. So, and I just have a little tube here because it's a little bit easier for me well, to work with. You buy your E6000 from Amazon right now. Um, you got the E6000. So I got the E6000 from at, two places. They have it at our local Hobby Lobby. They have it at Hobby Lobby. They, they have it at Hobby Lobby. They have it pretty much any craft, you know, a large big box craft store. Um, I do not know. I don't think that I've seen it at a place like Walmart. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure, but um, that's generally where I buy. But you can also buy on Amazon. Um, all right. So I'm taking that and I'm going to add a little bit to the each of those bases. I probably want Sam. Will you pull that? Pull that off for me, sweetie. Um, I saw somebody say you could use old earrings that have lost their mates. Here's the other thing. Um, you could also, if you, any of you are thrifters, if you like to go to thrift stores, you know, sometimes when you go into a thrift store, they have at the counter, um, women's pins, P-I-N-S, like pins, these brooches that women used to wear in the 50s, or they're also big metal earrings that were the clip-on earrings. Those are, um, could be really fun to do this with too. You can use um, hot glue. Sometimes with hot glue, um, sometimes hot glue will work and sometimes it doesn't. It really just depends on that seal. You, if you guys know what I mean, if you use hot glue, sometimes it just doesn't, um, it just doesn't stay, if that makes sense. All right, the other thing I like to do is put a little bit on each of the ends. And then it says you should wait. Now oh, I can't remember. Hold on. It says that you should wait. 
probably read somewhere that you should wait about 20 seconds before you would hear the two together. Um, you should wait for sure. It says 24 hours for these to cure. And then it says up to 72 hours. That's probably why I do a lot of these at the same time. Right, hot glue pops off, Michelle, sometimes. Oh, 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 sorry, you guys, off the screen. Sammy, sweetie, you're supposed to be watching, so I see if I go off the screen, okay? All right, so um, these have sat for a second. I am going to try not to get it on my hands. Oh. And basically, I'm going to adhere like that. And I will save my same paper plate and just line them up. Something like that, you wanna turn it over, unless you want it to kind of be at an angle, but you definitely don't want it to be upside down, right? We don't want it to be upside down. <coughs> Excuse me. Sometimes if they're really heavy, like this guy is gonna be really heavy, I may need to prop it up with something. So let's see, that's not enough. Because, oh goodness, I want to prop it up. Mom, does the E6000 have a strong odor? It does have a strong odor, yes, for sure. So I propped that up, and actually it's ended up propped under the Santa, not the thing. Just because while it's curing, um, the, heavy, the weight of the Santa could pull this guy off or away. It might not pull it off all the way, but it could pull it away from, that one might need a little bit more. That's all right. Could pull it away from the uh, the Santa or our objects. All right, one more. And we will just um, do that with our little pineapple here. So, and I always say, if you guys have friends that you craft with, that um, you do things like this with, you might not want to have a whole package like this of Halloween clips. But you know what? I buy this package. My friend Karen buys the package of gnomes. My friend Sam buys the package of pineapples. And then we make our things and then we swap. So sometimes uh, six is too many, but you can always swap or trade or give them away or use lots of them. So I would let those sit 24 hours, 72 hours, what have you. And then when I came back, I would have all of my cute little clips like that, right? Super easy. Oh, this was another, um, that was another Brad. So lots of different things that we can use. Okay, let me look at my little list. Oh, you know what? Oh, one more thing, I remembered. Um, we have one more to, oh, Santa slipped already. See, yep, so really what happened, um, I would want to really make sure that I got him propped up with something that was, uh, Sam, I'm going to hand this to you, sweetie. Will you just prop that Santa up so that's not going to move? And then I would set that plate off to the side. That sometimes, too, is why I would do it, on, do it on a paper plate because then I can easily just pick that up and move it somewhere, move it under a table or something that I know it is not going to... Um, I know it's not going to... Yeah, okay, thank you. So now, Sammy, when you put it on the plate, though, it needs something propped under it because it will fall. Okay, um, maybe... Just try to prop that under it, I don't know. Um, oh, um, I wanna back up for one minute. One more thing about the paper clips. And grab these guys. So this right here, I bought this. I did not make this. That's gonna bug me. I did not make this little guy, but that's just a pom-pom, right? And I think I saw somebody at some, some point say, oh, you could do that with pom-poms. So that is a pom-pom and it has a base on the back of it because that was, you know, I bought it that way. But you could take a base of felt, so cut out a little felt circle or you could cut out a, um, a piece of cardboard or something like that and adhere that. So you could have a cute little pom-pom. You can also make your own bow clips, right? So sometimes you can find and purchase Let's see, where are they? Hang on. Sometimes you can find and purchase 
Lots of different pre-made bow clips, right? So that is a pre-made bow clip. This one is not a pre-made bow clip. I bought that. This is a leather, like a leather type bow. Sure, I found at Hobby Lobby. And then I just used my paper clip and I threaded it right through that paper clip, right? Um, same thing here. This was a little tiny felt bow and I just took a little tiny paper clip and threaded it right through the back side. Um, paper, here's a paper bow. I did the exact same thing. So just threaded the paper clip kind of right through the center of the bow. This is one more and this is a purchased one, but if you have little felt flowers or you um, find little felt flowers at a, at a craft store, then you could also make your own little felt clips. So this one is obviously professionally made because this would not, mine would not look like that on the back at all. You guys saw what mine looked like on the back, but um, hot glue, Hot glue might be okay with your felt um, or E6000 and then put your clip in and then put something on top of it. Okay, last thing that we're going to do, we're gonna do one more clip, but this is a totally different kind of clip than what we've been doing. So let me just clean up the mess here. So, and Sam, I need the red one right there. Can you give me the red one? Your book? Yep. Okay. We are going to make a clip that is decorative, so it's form, but it also is function. And we're going to take a look at, let me just slide this little guy in here so you can see. And then we'll make. So, two different versions of this. Here, we are just using our... Pattern paper, right? So there is our pattern paper and a sticker and a paper clip. So that's a pretty basic version. But then what I can do is that is now a page marker for me, right? And it's cute too. So it's a page marker and I can use that to mark as many pages as I want. Um, those of you that like to read a lot, if you're reading with like a paper book, um, that would work as well. Here is definitely a more decorative version. This one, I think we did this in my Traveler's Notebook kit, the bi-monthly kit, I wanna say last February, anyhow. So same thing, we took a gold clip, we took a couple pieces of pattern paper, we took a ticket, we took some stickers, we took some gems, and we made that. And it's definitely much more decorative there, right? So let's make one of those. I have pulled out a piece of pattern paper. That's from the Miss Modern Collection. You guys see me use that a lot. I have that, well, there's 12 papers in the pack, but um, that I have on my website and I have it linked in the description below. And these guys, who remembers these stickers? These I used in, oh my gosh, way it, probably this, the coronavirus first started. I did a bucket list about, um, things that we wanna do that were on our bucket list while we were home. And I used this guy, that little sloth, and you guys loved it. And then one of my other lists, I used the fox, and then I used this little hedgehog guy. So many of you asked, where in the world did you get those cute stickers? You guys know what I did. Um, I sourced them and they are now available on my website. So I've linked to those in the description below, but these are some of my favorite stickers to use because they're so cute. So we are going to use, we need a clip, so here's my paper clip. We need a piece of pattern paper, at least one, and then a sticker or an embellishment or something to go with it. So I'm gonna grab my little paper trimmer. Sammy, did mm -hmm. you see where that went? My little paper trimmer? Mm -hmm. That little, oh goodness. Mm -hmm. um, oh, here it is, okay. Would you hand me my iced tea, sweetie? Of course. Thank you. Okay, it's a drink break, hang on. Debbie, I see you said you have a pattern for those bows. That could be fun. Um, I know even I think I want to say Silhouette probably has a cut file. Um, I'm sure Cricut has a cut file where you could, if you use a sil Silhouette or Cricut machine, you could do that also. All right, one more drink. Hang on. I should say one more sip. All righty. So... We have our piece of pattern paper, and this was just a scrap I had, so I haven't measured it um, at this point. But what I'm gonna do, let me see how thick that was, how wide. Need those back on. That 
it was about, mm, about one and three quarters. So let's try that. One and three quarters. And if we go like that, go like that. It's gonna be a little long, but we can trim it. So I wanna fold that little guy in half. And I like for my little clips to have a, like a little banner look to them. So they have a notch at the bottom. This one also had a notch at the bottom. Now, you can either put your sticker on and then notch, or you can notch and then put your sticker on. It, if you notch and put your sticker on, then you may not have enough room to do, uh, to include the sticker that you want, but either way. So I am going to notch. And remember when we were kids and we would make snowflakes or we would make a heart and we would fold things together so that we only had to cut half of the heart and then it would be even on both sides. That's exactly what we wanna do here. So we have the closed part up at the top, we have the open part at the bottom. I learned a long time ago when I first started teaching classes that people do this differently. What I do is I just come in like this, I'm just eyeballing it, right? And I come in like this and I say, yep, yeah, that looks good, it's not quite even, but that's okay. What some other people will do, fold this little guy, they will come up to the middle. So if you wanna to try to have it more even, you can come up to the middle and then cut in from this side and then cut in from this side. So that would give you theoretically a little more of an even, well, yeah. Theoretically a little bit more of an even. Now let's chop this off and show you one more way. You could also, this is a little bit harder because it's double but I could also pinch it in the middle since I know that that is definitely the middle. And then that could be my notch. And then I could come in this way and that way. Now, I guess your last option would be to get your protractor out and measure the angles and then get out your scientific calculator and run the calculations to make sure that you get that exactly right. And you know what? There's no right or wrong way to do that, right? Whatever works for you. So there we have it. I will then take, I want this little guy to be up at the top. So I'm gonna open this little guy back up again and slide it through, okay? I slide it through. Now you wanna think a little bit before you start doing your decorating. This would be backwards. Well, technically not backwards, I guess, because it depends on which side of the page that you're putting it on. If I put it, if I know I always wanna put them on my right side, and you know what? For whatever reason, I always do that from my right side. It could also go on the left side. So this may be a case if I am an ambidextrous um, banner clip that works with both sides, I might wanna decorate both sides of that clip so I could use it on the right and the left. If I'm not going to do that and I'm only going to use it on one side, before I start decorating, I wanna make sure that the opening is on the side where I want it to be. All right, so now I need to Grab a little bit of adhesive, because I want this to stay closed, right? I don't want it to be popping open on me all the time. I have now closed that. On this little guy, I had three layers. So I'm only showing you one layer, but you could do as many layers as you want. So I had a layer that was um, one piece of pattern paper, under that another piece of pattern paper, and then I even took probably two or three tickets, folded them over, so you can have layers. All righty. There is my front. And then what I, well, you guys know what I would do next because you all watch me do this all the time. Look at, even here it's done, you guys. It's even, that one's even outlined. And that one is even outlined. It's just, it's part of, it's part of what I do. Excuse you, Sammy. Thank you, Mommy. Do you guys ever hear like burps or hiccups when we're um, recording? Please know that Sam and not me. I mean, we all do that, but. Yeah, anyhow, it's Sam, not me. I'm not throwing Sam under the bus. And you know what? It's not quite even there, but that's okay. All right, so then I would look at my stickers and say, all right, what would be cute to do there? Because I need to make sure, and I gave myself a little bit more room. So this guy is not as tall, right, as that guy. So I would look at my stickers and say, oh, you know what? And actually this, I could probably do couple things, let's see. That's a little bit too big. 
it's, it's covering up more than I want it to cover up. So I would just look through. I really like this one. This little purse I think is super cute. So my little purse could be there. And then this little butterfly could be here. I know, and Michelle, you know what though? It, my, my lines aren't straight, right? My lines aren't straight at all. So um, if you are doing that, you just have to know that um, it's, it's, it's not straight. Most of the time things are not straight. So if you want them to be straight, outlining is probably not for you. And then if we wanted to do the backside, maybe I'd do like this little guy on the backside, okay? It's cute. And then if I really wanted to get decorative and have fun with it, I could pull out my little gems and I should have outlined before I put the sticker on. I could pull out my little gems, maybe a little enamel dots. Uh, hang on. My little enamel dot thing here. I am, um, you guys, there are a couple of hearts that I use all of the time on my things. And this is another one where um, people started asking, so I brought them in. I have, these are little enamel dots, but they're not enamel dots, they're enamel hearts. And what I like about this size is that they're super small. So I can work these into my traveler's notebooks a lot. So I might take, oh, I know, that reminded me of something too. Um, in this case, I would grab my little tweezers to pull them off. Um, we've talked about these tweezers before, you guys. They came in last week, so and they're gray, and they look much nicer than this because these are older than time. Um, but those are now on the What's New section of my website as well. All right, so, and actually, I should say the hearts are on there and the little tweezers are on there. But I just added that little tiny heart, and, oh, you know what? Actually, it would have been much cuter right here on the envelope, right? Because then we'd really see it. Ta-da! So that was super quick, but that was a super quick um, way that we could make a nice little decorative bookmark, right? So it attaches right there on my page. This one could, nope, that's backwards. So, I mean, obviously I wouldn't do this, but there are my three different bookmarks. My gems too, I could add gems on there. Anyhow, I could then definitely go through all of my stash and start pulling out all the things. And next thing you know, Sam's figuring out how we can add the squirrel to one of those little clips and... <laughs> oh, I better not do that, he's still super glued. No, nope, we're gonna try. Well, we're not gonna put him there. We are going to, okay, you guys, bear with me one sec because oh, I have to use a little jump ring here. So we're gonna add the squirrel. We are gonna add the squirrel. So, um, these little jewelry things. All right, you guys, so while I'm adding the squirrel, um, we are, you lost me? I don't know if you lost connection or if you're not, not sure what we're talking about. All right, so I'm gonna lobster clip the squirrel and we're gonna go right here. This is really funny. All right. And then we can attach. Let me attach this to one that's not. We'll attach to this guy. Oh, that one. You guys, they all have things on them. I put things on all of my little guys, especially if they're sticking on a shelf. Oh, I hope that's going to be okay. All right. There we go. There's the squirrel. Now we have our little squirrel charm that is, oh, 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 there we are. Okay. I thought we lost me for a minute because I, I it was just sitting there. Can we see? There's the little squirrel. All right, friends. Um, we are going to flip the camera, so hang tight for a second. Today was a faster one. Um, we have about a nine-hour drive ahead of us, so. That's um, why. <laughs> I, I had to try to make myself stick to some kind of schedule today. All right, we're coming. Hang on. I think you should just do the the outro upside down because that'd be funny. The out, no, I've done that before, Sam. We don't want to do it upside down. I know you've done the outro upside we, down. Yes, we did the outro. The outro, the intro, the outro. There's Sam's hand.
Are we good? Oh, we are very crooked. Um, it was really funny, you guys, and I don't know if she's here or not, but um, uh, when I did the outro and Sam wasn't here and I turned the phone and I was upside down, I think I would basically, it looked like I was standing on it, on my head, so that was kind of funny, and she actually did a screenshot of that, and yeah. I don't remember, did something with it, but it was fun. Yes. All right, you guys, so that wraps up week 10, um, week 11. So next weekend, I was supposed to be in Southern California teaching at a store called Treasured Memories um, in Thousand Oaks area. That is not happening. I will not be there teaching in person, but I will be teaching next Saturday and Sunday um, doing some private live YouTube classes. So um, next Saturday, I will not be here. I am still trying to figure out in my head if I can pre-record something ahead of time. Sam and I won't get back until late Wednesday night. So um, I may record something ahead of time. I may not. I may decide to do something on Friday afternoon. And if we do it Friday afternoon and you can make it great, what? Sam's over here telling me, come on, come on, come on. We need to get on the road, Mom. Yes, I understand that, sweetie. Um, <laughs> I've lost my train of thought. Um, anyhow, maybe we'll do a Friday afternoon. And if you can make it great, Friday afternoon would be like Pacific time. So if you can make it great, if you can't make it, then you can watch after the fact. In fact, I think that's what I might do. Week 11, we're doing a week 11. Week 11, Friday afternoon, let's say at... Um, 4 p.m. Pacific time. We write that down for me. 4 p.m. Pacific time next Friday. On Friday or Thursday, I don't write that on my hand. <laughs> okay. Oh, I need to add it to my. Don't no. Don't write it on the stickers. Okay, please. Oh my gosh, you guys. Seriously, here. Sam, write it on here. Don't write it on the back of the stickers. I'll lose it. I should have just written it down. Um, I'm still going to let you just write it down because you can't read my hand right Okay. We said Friday. 4 p.m. Eastern. No, not Eastern. Western. 4 p.m. Pacific time. All right. So um, I will send out an email like I always do ahead of time with the link for that class. Um, if you subscribe, then you will... Sam, please stop that. Mm. <laughs> if you subscribe, you will automatically be notified. Shh, don't but, be that loud. Bye, Grammy. Bye, Mom. Um, if you subscribe, you'll automatically be notified when that, um, when I put that up next week is going to be another live list with me. So I won't have time, um, while I'm out of town to see my dad, uh, to put together content like I normally do. So we will be doing a list with me live and, um, you guys can have your stickers, your washi, whatever you want to have ready to list and we'll have three at least three topics again and we'll have fun listing together those are always one of my favorite things to do because that's always totally on the fly where i really haven't planned ahead of time of what we're doing so what are you reading sam what your mother said i don't know what she said what she said maybe a bloody mary <laughs> maybe a bloody okay so i better quantify that um my mother suggested a bloody mary before we leave sam will be driving I will not be. So if I have a Bloody Mary before we leave, that is okay. I would not I, have a Bloody I think, Mary well, and I get think, mine I think you might want to have a Paloma before we leave. A Paloma, leave. okay. I know. We all know my deal with Palomas. Anyhow, friends, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if you have, hang on, Sammy. If you have questions, remember, leave them in the comments because I can respond to you there. Comment after the fact. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, what you want to see next time. And please give me a thumbs up if you like the videos. All right, friends. Take care, and we will see you next Friday. Bye-bye.